Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and it is finally time. I have been holding off on doing this video for months because I just felt, you know, if I'm gonna talk about my team that I'm gonna be using in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and specifically Brilliant Diamond, I wanna talk about it on the channel and I want to do it, you know, decently close to the game's release. So now here we are with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl releasing officially next week. We're going to be talking about the team that I'm going to be using on my first playthrough. And I'm happy to announce that I will be live streaming my first playthrough right here on the channel. The day that the games come out, Friday the 19th, I will be streaming my playthrough of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond right here on the channel. You guys can tune in as I anticipate what will be a decently long stream going through the first bulk of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and subsequently there will be another stream that same weekend where we play through the rest of it. The plan is to finish the game on stream to play through it from start to finish. Whatever number of streams it takes, however long it takes, we're going to do it. It's going to be a blast so be sure to tune in here on the channel. And as I mentioned on the community tab a couple days ago, I'm aware, as is everyone, that the games have leaked online completely. I am not going to be covering those leaks on the channel. I will not talk about anything that isn't in the trailers until the games come out. And I would please like to ask that you guys try to keep some of the spoilers as to what's in the leaks out of the comments section for people who don't want to be spoiled. With that being said, let's jump right into things. Now, before we get into any specific teammates that are going to be joining us on this journey, I'm going to be playing Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. As I mentioned in the intro, it'll be on stream. We're going to be picking the male character, of course. And as soon as I have the ability to get Mystery Gift, I'm going to download the special, I believe it's like the pre-release, but it's basically by the game before February, and get the Platinum Outfit for my character because the Platinum Outfit for Sinnoh is Elite. It is far better than the character outfit in Diamond and Pearl. It is eons better. With that being said, let's get to the first Pokemon, and that is my starter. Of the three, Chimchar, Turtwig, and Piplup, who am I going to be picking to go on this journey with? And I'm going to be going with the Penguin Pokemon himself, Piplup. Eventually, he'll become an Empoleon, and he is going to be the anchor of my team. Now, you will see later on in this video that I like to go for a Fire, Water, Grass core on my teams. It's nothing groundbreaking. I usually like to pick a Pokemon from each of these types. He doesn't have to have a secondary typing. I just want those three set because it really helps with weaknesses and advantages over other typings. It just lets me round out my team. So to start that water grass core, we're going to go with the water and ice type Pokemon Empoleon. Empoleon has a great move set and he's got some really good abilities. Empoleon is also really helpful against a bunch of different gyms in the Sinnoh region. And in terms of personal preference, he's up there with Torterra as my tied for favorite starter Pokemon in the Sinnoh region. They are also tied for one of my favorite starter Pokemon in general. Uh, Swampert takes the cake, and then Empoleon and Torterra are up there with Delphox as well. Those are some of my favorite starters. So Empoleon is going to be the pick. It was actually Torterra for months, but I flipped in September when I was starting to think about doing this video, and I decided I want to use a Torterra maybe in Legends Arceus, because you can catch the Sinnoh starters in that game. So I'm going to go with Empoleon, Piplup as my starter in Brilliant Diamond. It's going to be a blast. He's great. He's awesome. He's a penguin. Look at him. He's ice type. He's fun. He's wonderful. He fits the Sinnoh region really well. Really well. Empoleon is my pick. Now, for those of you who don't know, the vast majority of you guys who are watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time and really do a lot to show me that you guys are enjoying this video and that you want to see more in the future. So be sure to hit that subscribe button today and you'll never miss another upload of mine. And once you subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new video, which is usually twice a week. Next up will be my grass type and I'm going to be going for a bit of a different pick. This is going to be a Pokemon that got a brand new evolution in Generation 4 who didn't already have an evolution beforehand. That is going to be the grass type Pokemon Tangrowth. Tangrowth is a Pokemon that I fell in love with using and the idea of using this Pokemon in Brilliant Diamond actually from one of the game trailers. In one of the trailers where we could see the player character walking with Pokemon, we saw a Tangrowth walking behind the trainer character and I just absolutely loved how Tangrowth looks in the overworld in this game and it got me thinking about my grass type starter 
or not grass type starter, grass type teammate, since I was no longer going to be using Torterra. And I decided, let's give a Pokemon that I have never used in a playthrough a shot. Tangrowth is bulky. Tangrowth learns a bunch of different offensive grass type moves. He is a really interesting Pokemon. He's mono grass, which is really appealing because mono grass is a fun type to mess around with. And he's just different. He's not a Pokemon that I see a lot of people use. As I just said, he's not a Pokemon I've ever used. So Tangrowth, the evolution of Tangela, finally a Gen 1 Pokemon getting a new evolution in Gen 4, is going to be my pick. It's a more of a late game pick because you don't get Tangela until a little bit later on in the game. But I'm really excited to use him. I think it's going to be interesting to see what moveset I'm going to eventually give him and how I'm going to choose to use Tangrowth in the game, especially going off of some of the other teammates that I have. Now, after Tangrowth and Empoleon, we're going to be going to the third piece of my Fire, Water, Grass core. And I'm going to be picking Rapidash. Rapidash is one of my favorite Pokemon. The Fire Horse from Generation 1. I adore Rapidash. And listen, it's fair to say there aren't a lot of fire typing Pokemon available in the Sinnoh region. There's not a lot, especially in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl's original games, Diamond and Pearl. But Rapidash is a great Pokemon. Rapidash learns a plethora of fire type moves. You can get Ponyta decently early on in the game. Rapidash does evolve pretty late, but once you get him, you get a pretty powerful fire type Pokemon. And I understand that some people don't love the design of Rapidash, but I always have. I have really strong nostalgia for Rapidash, specifically in Generation 4. I remember when I was a kid, I caught a Ponyta and I was incredibly confused. Now at the time, I didn't have access to the internet. This was right before our family finally got internet or figured out how to use our internet. And I was leveling Ponyta up in the 30s constantly. And I was like, why isn't this Pokemon evolving? I know it evolves. Do I have some kind of glitch in my game? Is there something wrong with this Ponyta? But I was just really excited and felt really rewarded that I had worked so hard to get this Rapidash. For that reason, I'm going to be using him as the fire type on my team. Another mono type. I'm going to be fixing that with some other Pokemon picks here because I like to use a bunch of varied types on my teams. But Rapidash is going to be on the squad and he's going to be very important when we head up north against Candace's gym and against all the other ice type trainers when you head up north towards Snow Point City. The next Pokemon on this list, the Pokemon that I teased a couple weeks ago in my spooky and scary BDSP team member idea video back for Halloween, it is Dusk Noir. Dusk Noir is awesome. I first got to love Dusk Noir when he was included in a character in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time, Darkness, and Sky. If you guys have never played that side game, I would highly encourage it. It came out during Generation 4's original run back on the DS. It has an impeccable story, one of the best stories of any video game that I've ever played. And I further grew to love Dusk Noir when I got to watch Chuck Conroy, who's a Pokemon Let's Player on YouTube, use a Dusk Noir on his team in his playthrough of Pokemon Platinum. Dusk Noir is a bulky ghost type Pokemon, learns a lot of great moves. He's not really used a ton and his design is excellent. It's just... It's such a sl slick and sick design for a ghost type Pokemon. The lore implications behind him, as I talked about in that previous BDSP video, are awesome. And as you'll notice with a the theme with a bunch of these Pokemon that I'm using in Brilliant Diamond, I've never used one before. And he's an evolution of a previously uh, previous existing Pokemon from a previous generation. I love that fact of Generation 4. I love that they did that. So I want to use as many of those Pokemon as possible. So Dusknoir is the pick there. The next one after Dusk Noir is also a Pokemon that I've never used, and he's another Gen 3 Pokemon, as is Dusclops and Duskull, Dusk Noir's original two forms. That is Metacham, a psychic and fighting type. I absolutely adore Metacham. I think he gets a really insanely good move pull. He gets really good type advantage against a bunch of the Team Galactic Grunts and a bunch of the gym leaders in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and his design is awesome. Psychic type is also really fun to mess with, and when you pair it with a fighting type, it's just hard to beat. It's a really fun type. You can get a bunch of different moves to your ability. Metacham evolves from Metatite. He doesn't evolve at a super high level, so you'll have him pretty early. And he learns some really devastating wipeout attacks if you want to go for something crazy like a high jump kick. Metacham is the Pokemon I'm going to be using for number five on my team to go with Dust Noir. So we got some ghost types, we got some psychic types, got some fighting types, getting some monotypings mixed in there. It's a really fun Pokemon. It's another one, as I mentioned before, that I've never used before. And I think he goes really well with the makeup of the rest of my team. Now, I love having a flying type Pokemon on my team. 
even though we're not going to need to use the HM fly in this game because we're going to have it through the Pokatch. I love the idea of having a flying type Pokemon on your team to be able to survey the world you're exploring, to engage in sky battles, all of that stuff. It's really, it's just fun for the idea of being a Pokemon trainer, and it gives you a bit of a different look on your team. Now, there are some very basic Pokemon to use in this category. You could go with the simple one, Staraptor. Very boring, countless times used. It is what it is. You could go with Drifblim, which adds in a ghost typing. One that I've used a bunch as well, an awesome Pokemon with really, really well done design, really good lore implications, especially with its pre-evolution Drifloon. I talked about that in one of my previous Halloween videos as well. He's another option. There are a bunch of other ones you can use too. There's the, the, the Mothams of the world. Uh, if you want a Pokemon that just levitates instead of flies, you could go with Miss Magius. There's a bunch of different options for this kind of like in the air Pokemon, but I want to use one that I don't see used a ton in Generation 4. It is a Generation 3 Pokemon. It is a dragon type Pokemon. It is a Pokemon that I don't think gets appreciated enough, even though it got a Mega Evolution in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Since Hoenn is my favorite region for building teams, I am picking the one and only Altaria to be my sixth member of my brilliant diamond team. Altaria is a beast, learns a ton of great flying type moves, a ton of great dragon type moves. It throws people off. I was talking to my roommate about what my team was gonna be and when I mentioned him that Altaria was a dragon, he was like, what? People don't even realize Altaria is a dragon type. It's a really sick dual typing of dragon and flying and I wanted to use a dragon type, but when it comes to Sinnoh, the typical thing to do when you pick a dragon type is to go with Garchomp. And Garchomp is very simple and very basic. He's like the mascot along with Lucario of Generation 4. I didn't want to use him. I wanted to go with something different, and Altaria is a gorgeously designed Pokemon. Its cloud appearance makes it really cool and really unique, and I think it's going to look really good in battle and animation in this game. We've seen a bunch of different flying type Pokemon in some of the animations and trailers for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, both in battle and in the overworld. Altaria is going to look really cool. Unfortunately, we don't know right now from official material if there's going to be Mega Evolutions in the game, so Mega Altaria is probably not going to be an option because I think they would have confirmed it by now. But Altaria on its own is great too. And it gets a three prong evolution, so you're going to get to use your Swablu for a while. You're going to get to use the middle evolution. Does it have a middle evolution? I don't think it does. It's just a two-page stage evolution. Disregard my fake news there for a moment, but it's a great Pokemon. It's a, it's a really awesome one. I'm really happy to use it. I almost forgot when I was planning this team that you could even get Swablu in the Sinnoh region, but you can. So we're gonna be using one, and that is the final member of my Brilliant Diamond team. So that's my list. That is my team for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. I would say it's subject to change, but I'm feeling pretty good with what I have right now. This will be the team that you guys will see most likely, unless I change something last minute. I mess with Heracross and Vespaquen as possibilities when I was building this team, so you never know. But this is most likely going to be the team you see when I live stream Pokemon Brilliant Diamond next week. I'm really excited with it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's different. I really love my starter choice. I'm just really happy with it. Have you guys thought about what teams you're gonna be using in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And if you have, I would love to know down in the comments section. Do you have any Pokemon that are similar to mine? Did you pick the same starter as me? Or are you going with something very different? Are you going with something super basic? The common, you know, Torterra, Staraptor, Luxray, et cetera, et cetera. I would love to know down in the comments section. And of course, as I mentioned before, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you never miss a video, and leave a like if you enjoyed my team and if you are enjoying these videos that I'm putting out every week. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.